So at this point, we've sanitized, we're ready to go. So we're setting up our mise en place for our measuring. So the first thing that you would want to understand is that measuring has some standardized elements. And if you use those standardized techniques, everyone will get the same looking product every single time. So dry ingredients are measured with this technique. So I'm going to need a measuring cup, a spoon to scoop, and a leveler. Okay. Underneath your cabinets you have a large flour bin, a large sugar bin that are located down in this flour cabinet. Alright, so to measure flour or a dry ingredient of the same consistency, you're going to fluff because flour tends to pack and it will give you an inaccurate measurement. So you fluff it up and then you spoon it. And when you get it to the point that it's heaping, you need to fluff that one more. Yeah. Okay. When you get it heaping, then you take your leveler and you just level it off. Don't, don't tap and pack, just level. And there's your one cup. Standardized dry measuring. All right, so now there's a different ingredient, uh, like brown sugar that has some moisture content to it, so it doesn't just level easily, and you have to actually pack it. So this, plus shortening, um, butter, if you're going to measure it in this kind of cup, you'd have to pack it in. In your kitchen, you have the flour and sugar, but you do not have the brown sugar. That is just one bin that we will set on the cart, and you can come with your measuring things and get that. So the technique for this one is scoop, pack and level. So you're going to take and you're going to get it loosened up and you're going to scoop it in and then you're going to pack it down and you'll continue to scoop and pack until it is overflowing the top. And when you've got it packed in, then you take and then you will level. And then you have an accurate measurement. The interesting thing is I will know that you've measured it correctly because you should be able to turn it out onto a surface and it should hold its shape like a sand castle. So scoop, pack, and level for ingredients that have moisture content. Alright, so then the next type of ingredient that you'll need to measure is some kind of liquid, either water, oil, syrup, things like that. You're going to use what we call a glass, liquid glass measuring cup. This one has the markings on the side, and you'll go ahead and pour to the level that you think. And I usually look, I can see when it's getting close when I'm looking like at this direction. Okay, but then you have to check it. It's very much like a test tube, but bigger. So if it, you have a test tube, and when it gets to the line, it has the meniscus, and you have to measure it at the bottom. This is the same thing. So I'm gonna turn it so that I can get down at eye level, and I can see the bottom of that meniscus. And I can see that I'm just about two tablespoons too much. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that back in. And I'm going to go back to eye level and check to see now it's on the line. You can kind of see there's an itty bitty little dip and you want to be at the lowest point. Okay, so that's your liquid measure. Alright, so sometimes you encounter measuring things that are chunky like chocolate chips or shredded coconut or whatever. So then what you're going to do for this one is you're going to pour the item into the cup until it is a little bit of heat over the top. And I'll show you here in a sec what that looks like. And you can kind of gently pat it around to fill in some of those spots. And then when you hold it up, you should see just a little bit over the top. So that's how you measure things that have some chunkiness to them. All right, so most of the things I've shown you up to this point are large ingredients measured in cups. But now we're getting down to smaller things that you might use 
off of your tray here in your cabinet. Things like baking soda, vanilla, and salt. So I'm going to show you how to do each one of these measurements. So you, for these, you're going to want to have these little custard cups. It's really helpful to measure over so that if you get any spills, it's easy to clean up. So, and then you'll need your measuring spoons, which are back in this drawer here. Okay, so for baking soda, the nice thing is the box is designed to give you a leveler right here. So all you have to do is scoop it up and then pull and drag, and there's your leveled measurement for small things like baking soda, or we'd say this is a small dry ingredient. Salt is a little crazier because it pours and then it goes everywhere. So I usually say pour over your little bowl, then take your leveler, level it off. So then there's your dry ingredient level measure. And then you can just pour it back into the container. Just like so. The last one is a liquid. Okay, so before we used the glass liquid measure, this time it's a small enough ingredient that you're still gonna use your measuring spoon, but you're gonna measure over the bowl because you know it goes everywhere. And then what we're aiming is that surface tension on the top you can kind of see that it's rounded a little bit and that surface tension is keeping it from falling over that is a correct measurement all right so the last thing I'm going to show you today is measuring an egg so when you're doing this you're going to want to crack it on a surface and then very carefully crack it into your little bowl. Number one, it's easier to fish out an eggshell out of a small space than it is your big batter that you're working with. Plus, every once in a while, we get an egg that has a blood spot in it. Not that that would harm you any, but it's very not appealing to cook with. So, this is your opportunity to inspect the egg, make sure it's all good before you pour it in. So there is all of your standardized measuring techniques.